as most filmmakers, I've always focused more into the image than the sound. It's right there. You can criticize it and you can change it and you can modify it and you can get instantly better by simply changing things around. And you can see it, right? A lot of the times is what we think is there to tell our story is was in front of the camera was into this frame that we create is what's going to tell our stories but after going through some really bad experience with sound and almost losing some short films because of it i decided to commit and really learn sound to really put myself into a learning position and take it from zero look for dummies videos on how does it work what should i be looking for what does it make good sound what does it make bad sound how can I back up? How can I make things better? I went on this learning curve that led me to see that I was completely underprepared to do sound. I think all I had was a, a, one of those very cheap shotguns on top of my camera and some bad lapel mics. So those weren't really giving me good sound. But more than that, the positioning of the sound was wrong and the way that I kind of went around wasn't the most effective. A quick disclaimer, none of this equipment were bought overnight. They took some time and they took some learning and they are not the best by any means. They are the best for me and for the things that I do. Uh, I'll tell you my opinion on them, but I don't know if they're gonna work for you. This is my audio box and it consists essentially of any audio equipment that I would ever need. First thing is my main recorder, which is a Zoom H6. It's an amazing sound recording device. It has four input and some crazy settings. It plugs into the wall, so it can be really great for really long date shoots. Secondly, I have my shotgun microphones. I have two of those, an NTG4 Plus and an NTG2. I usually use the NTG2 on the camera as it doesn't need to be switched on and off. And I use the NTG4 Plus for audio recording voiceovers as things come out a little more clear. And then for those, I have the cables, a small one for the camera itself and a longer one for anything else really. And here I also have these podcast stands that I bought right before this pandemic. I wanted to start a podcast, but it didn't really work out as seeing people became a no-go. Obviously, I don't use them for podcasts anymore as I'm not doing a podcast, but I do use them very often. Uh, voiceovers, sound effects, uh, and even this YouTube video is uh, kind of just... Because I do quadrant framing into my videos, doing a boom mic coming from above wouldn't be ideal because it would be a lot of distance between uh, the end of the frame here and my mouth. I keep it below and it works out great. I don't have a bunch of stands standing around. I literally just have this uh, podcast stand with a microphone just below. I'm sorry. I have these Sony headphones that do an okay job. I have this Zoom H1, which I bought before the Zoom H6, and I enjoy using these, especially for lapel mics. I would pop a lapel into these and give it to the speaker, and it has always worked out amazing. Which leads me to the next item in this box, the Tascan D10 which is one of my favorite microphones for many reasons. First of all, I hate radio microphones. They'll always fail on you from time to time. Dealing with frequencies is a nightmare. Now with these, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna forget what audio problems feels like. These are small, they're great sound quality, and they're not radio. These are recorders. You pop a macro SD in here, a AAA battery, and these will run the whole day. The nice thing about the Tascan is that it allows you to record two frequencies at the same time. These became extremely useful for me and now I have four of these. Apart from that, I have little nuggets and stuff to hold the microphones. I also have a boom pole, which I guess is necessary, but completely hateful to buy. That's all I have for you this video. If, if you're interested in learning about sound and you feel like you yourself should put some time into it, I'm gonna make a playlist down below for some of the videos that really helped me. If you wanna have a look at them, if you know nothing about sound, they usually helps you have a pretty good idea. And then from that, you can go look into equipment and all those things if you decide to buy stuff. But again, I didn't buy these overnight. I kind of found them as I needed them throughout filmmaking. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.